Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the bear white tail. Now, when I come to do a review, I often think which bow am I going to review? And today I thought I'll do bear because bear's been really popular as far as bows, and I haven't done bear for a while. So I put on a bear wind cheater. Now, if you're going to shoot in a wind cheater, put these tussles, tassels inside because they can get stuck on your string if you're shooting or cause you to shoot a low shot. That's my tip for the day. Um, okay, bear white tail. Single cam bow, it's a budget level bow from Bear. So when I was going to do this review, Bear only just came into my store. So it's not in my new store yet, it's in my old store, if that makes sense. So they've only been put on display in the new store, they're not in the store that's actually doing stuff. This is the bear's species, and I'm like, well, what's the difference between the species and the whitetail? Because these both came in together. They are both the same ATA, um, both the same axle axle, they're both the same speed, they're both single cam, and they both have the same riser. Well, before doing this review, I looked up the um, thing, and obviously the whitetail's been replaced with the species, so it's basically the same boat. Now, I'm not doing this review on the species because I didn't have a 60 pound one in stock because I sold them all. So we're going to do the whitetail. Um, the whitetail and the species comes in really good colours. It comes in a camo and it comes in this sort of olive sort of colour and this is very um, popular these days. It comes with a full kit. Um, it also comes as a bow. But as a full kit, this bow is selling for $620. Pretty cheap, right? Now you need to add arrows and a release aid to that, but you're getting out of this really, really affordably. Now this is a budget level bow, so you don't have all the fancy high speeds and all the fancy stuff on it, but it's still pretty impressive. Now these limbs from Bear, I'm going to guess, are the limbs that Bear used to make many, many years ago, and I'm going to go into a bit of history on this. So there was three Bear com there was three companies. There was Jennings, there was Bear, and there was Golden Eagle. Bear purchased Jennings, and at the time, Jennings made a limb like this. And it was virtually indestructible. It came on the um, Jennings Carbon Extreme. These were made at the factory through this fiberglass process, and I really never had any warranty on these limbs. Bear then purchased Jennings and they applied them on their limbs. Uh, Golden Eagle then purchased Bear and Jennings and just renamed everything Bear. So, and these are the limbs they're using. Now on the top end Bear bows, you'll see they're using the Gordon Glass limbs, um, which is what most companies are using. But these look like the original limbs that Bear used to use, which were basically indestructible. It's a plastic limb pocket, but what's a little bit different about this pocket here, it's got these little um, things in here, and it kind of wedges the limbs into the pocket, which is kind of cool. These little things here look like what's on the top of the top line, top of the line bears where you can lock the limb pockets into the riser. There's no limb, lock, limb, pocking, limb locking system here on this bow. Um, Draw length is adjustable from, it says 25 to 29, oh, sorry, 23 to 30. Now I think the species goes out further and it's on their little tart card here. Draw length goes from 23 to 30. Um, so the card is good. So. This here is a little card. Um, it tells you who who built the bow, who built the um, strings and the label stickers, um, what they measured the bow weight at, 63 pounds, um, who installed the accessories, um, and who shipped the loose items, who packaged the bow. Now you know why you know why they're putting these little codes on because if there's a problem, they go back to that person which is great. So, um, you've got a little tag here, which is just, you know, register your bow. But I really like this count card here. It tells you a bit about it, how to press the bow, how not to press the bow. Most warranties, most warranties, most damages 
are done in bow presses, so just bear that in mind. Axle axle, 31. Um, brace height, 6.75. It comes in two poundages, 45 to 60 and 55 to 70. 320, 80% let off. 4.3 pounds is a heavy 4.3. Um, it says it's set at 28 inches from the factory. Um, and the date it was built was the 15th of the 2nd um, by AC, whoever that is. Um, it's got a limb stop down the bottom here. Well, it's a cable stop. So this cable here touches the stop to make it stop. Um, you rotate the module down the bottom here to get the draw length and the module will be in the same position So there's little numbers here for the stops. So the module will be in the same position as the stop. Um, basic carbon cable guard, basic strings. The peep's kind of interesting. The peep's this kind of where you don't have to tie it in, it kind of crosses over, which is interesting because Bear used the same peep on the new system, but whoever installed it didn't install it correctly. Um, and hence, this is why they put the little labels on. Um, you can see it hasn't been installed correctly. Um, the sight on this one is a five pin sight on the new species it's a four pin sight the white tail has um, wrapped fiber optic pin the new one the new species doesn't so in the white tail it's got a better sight same price um, comes with a bow quiver which is you know pretty good bow quiver comes with a whisker biscuit arrow rest which is the original whisker biscuit which is better than than the other ones that we're not naming comes with a D loop look it's pretty good it's all set up at the factory and to me that is a really really good thing because if I'm selling these to shops the shop can just sell them all they've got to do is wind down the bow poundage and teach the person to shoot and off they go um, so comparing the species to the white tail like everything looks identical it looks to me like I put a slightly cheaper side on the species and that's about it. Okay, so the overall qual so the overall quality of this finish, the limbs look great. Um, they're really nicely. See how they round off the limbs here. This reduces the chances of getting splinters on the limbs because if you bump these limbs on the edge, and it's a sharp edge like on the Gordon Glass limbs, where the companies don't round them, you get a splinter lift off. So that's through bumping. They round these, giving more surface area, reducing the chances of splitting the limbs. So that's a really, really good thing. The edges are nice and smooth. It's a like a, it's a rough paint finish. Kind of be really hard wearing paint is I suppose what I'm trying to say. The riser is that hard finish paint as well. But I'm going to say there's two marks. This is straight out of the package and there's two marks. There's one there and there's one there. Um, this hole here is for a two-piece quiver, there and there. Um, I don't know if Bear's gone away from the two-piece quivers. This is good. Two, two bolts here to bolt the arrow whisker biscuit on so it can't move. That's great. Look, it, to me it looks the go. Like, roller bearings in the wheels, roller bearings in the wheels down the bottom here. So Bear haven't skipped on cheaper wheels when they built this bow. It looks, it all looks pretty good. So let's try the draw cycle out. We'll put through a chronograph. Now I haven't drawn, I haven't shot this bow before. I haven't done anything with it. Now it says it was 63 pounds from the factory. It says 28 inches. I tend not to play with the bows. Most bows come set at 29. So let's just see how the bow feels. Now the grip to start with feels wider in the throat here. So right up here where my fingers are, it feels wide. It doesn't, I kind of feel like I want to, I feel like I want to get my hand there and then I feel like my hand's kind of doing this. It feels like it's expanding. I would like this squarer here. It's not the most comfortable grip. Um, straight out of the package, you, you probably wouldn't notice it, but there are other grips 
See, like here, it's it's just too it's just too wide at the throat here. It just that's just me. I don't know what you think. Let's just take this little tag off. Okay, let's try to draw. I know here it says this little tag here says you can't wind the bow back more than five turns because the limbs will pop. That's nice. I prefer little. <laughs> I was just checking if the other one's got it. I prefer bushings in here that the limb bolts bolt into because you reduce the chance of stripping out the limb bolts um, and damaging the entire riser. So let's just try the draw cycle. So it's pretty. It's pretty solid all the way through. Um, it feels like 63. I shoot generally 60. So it feels like it's about to drop, dropping, 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 dropping. There. So look. So this is what I want to anchor. You can see my the peep sight right on my nose. <laughs> I don't know, like, do people anchor in different spots? I don't know. Like, generally there is here, and like, I kind of, I think I anchor there, I don't know. Do some people anchor up here? I don't, the distance from here to here should be about six and a half inches. Ooh, right, I'm not going to move that peep sight without a bow. So this, <laughs> this is a non-surf peep, and you can see I can't move it. So we're going to shoot it without the peep. Um, I'd normally shoot without the peep, it's just... So you're going to need a bow press or maybe wind down the bow a bit to... to... The huge valley. It's very comfortable when you get back here. Okay, so I shot a VAP 350 with 140 grain points. It's my standard, um, it's my standard arrow. <laughs> As I'm looking at what fell off. It shot at 254 feet per second. Now I think the normal bows shoot at around 270 with that arrow. Now what came off was the light. So the light came off here, the light screws into here. A bit weird. Now I'm going to tell you why, <laughs> why the light. Um, they, they obviously didn't screw it in because this is a... So the way to turn on this light is to screw it in here and if you turn it in too much then the battery will be on. But the pins are really well lit up. I don't know if you can see that but they're really well lit up. Anyway, I generally don't use the light. So that's 254. Now bear in mind this is meant to be 28 inches and I normally shoot at 29. So let me just try this again. Now this is the arrow I test all my speeds on. It's a, a velocity uh, from gold tip, 400 spine with a 80 grain point, it weighs 327 um, grains. Look, it feels like 28 and a half to me, even more towards the 29. <laughs> 273. Now this bow was rated at 320. Um, so a lot of bows will shoot about 310 with that arrow. So this bow is shooting a bit slower. And I think that's because of the big valley. It's probably also like I've got, it's probably half an inch short in draw, so that will add a bit of speed to it. But it's got, it's such an easy bow to shoot and draw with that big, big valley that you're not getting the, the blistering speed you'd expect to. So I'm going to say that the 320 is probably wishful thinking. Um, but, heck, wait, the vibration's good. The, the, it's comfortable. 
So this is a 3D HFB from Victory. And that's 287. Um, those things fly. The bow has no vibration after the shot. There's no stabilizer, there's no sling. Um, it's very nice to shoot. Like, the draw cycle's nice. There's no vibration. To me, it's quiet to shoot. It'd be a very solid bow, as far as I couldn't see anything going wrong with it. Um, I couldn't see any cam lean at the top. I didn't look at the bottom. If there was cam lean, you could move it backwards and forwards because there's all, um, there's all, um, washers down the bottom here. I'll try and zoom in there on that side and that side. On one of the forums, one of the guys was missing one of these or something happened. Look, it just seems to me to be a really good value for money bow. So with that, let's go and shoot the bow at 18 meters and see how well I shoot. Okay, so I'm at, hit, I'm at 18 meters. I've fired about four shots um, and the arrows hit high nine at about 11 o'clock. That's the closest I've got. But the arrows seem to be shooting good, so I'm happy to shoot this. Um, the first one was high. And you can see how high I've had to adjust my sight upwards. Some bows offer various sight positions here. Some sights offer various sight positions as this one does. But you can see my sight's almost as high as it can go. And that's at 18 meters. Still, it's still fine. So, um, now the bow doesn't, the bow feels extremely comfortable to shoot. Like, feels great as far as it's just there's no vibration it's easy you get in the valley you aim the pin's stable it's it's just easy right it's just it's a joy to shoot this boat However, this bow does not feel like a 320 bow. It feels more like a 290 bow, and that's, I'm, I feel like I'm going to get in trouble, but it's got no sense of speed at all about it. It's, is that going to stop you killing an animal? No. Is it going to make you less accurate? No, absolutely not. It's just what it is. It just doesn't have the, grunt, it doesn't have that quick valley, it's just easy to shoot, it's... Like, I haven't got a stabilizer on here, I assume these are going in the middle, I can't see them. It's... And I assume they're going in the middle just because it's easy to shoot, and they could be everywhere, but... They just feel really nice. Now, between me doing the first bit of the video and this bit where the grip was wide, I went and grabbed all the rest of the bare risers on their compounds to compare them to see if they all felt quite wide in the throat. Now, most of them did. Most of them had this style of throat where, the, where it's quite wide up here, except for the divergent. The divergent was, it felt extremely light, the bow. This is their top end bow and it was the narrow throat that I, that I prefer in a bow. Saying that, this is not affecting the way I shoot this bow. It's... It's just easy. It's so easy to shoot this bow. It's now, joke could be on me because they could be everywhere. The bow just feels, it's just, just there's not like this one says, there's nothing, there's no vibration, there's no shock, it's just the pin sits in the middle. And if this is 63 pounds, which I guess it is, but it's got 80% let off when I get back here, it's just locked in. And then, I don't know if that one went in low. 
alone. Um, it's very, very good. And for a cheap budget bow, it's very good. Okay, so the negative parts. Bear tends to be a rock solid brand. They, their pricing points are very similar to PSE. And I'm not saying that because you'd say, well, you do many PSE videos. Hoyt, Hoyt Elite, it Hoyt's to hurt. <laughs> what was that from the Olympics? Oh, Hoyt. Um, that Hoyt. Um, Hoyt Elite Matthews Bowtech tend to be at the top end of the price brackets and they tend not to have much at the bottom end of the market. PSE go from the bottom end to the top, they do target, they do the whole range. Bear does bottom end to top end of the hunting, they don't do target. As a result, they tend to be very competitive with PSE. So PSE tends to be cheaper than your Matthews, your Hoyts, your Botex, your Elite. Um, they tend to almost be on the dollar with Bear for a similar price bow. So this bow competes com completely with the PSE Stinger. And Hoyt, Elite, Matthews don't have a bow to compete with this. Um, the only other bow which is going to compete with this is going to be Chinese. You know, when I got this review, when I started this review, I was like, oh, the bow feels heavier than 4.3. When I'm actually aiming at full draw, this bow doesn't feel that heavy. It feels quite light, and I'd want more stabilizers on here. Um, but it's, it's nice. Could have been in the RSPCA. Um, <laughs> if you don't have the RSPCA in America, that's the Animal Welfare Group that has just put in a whole petition to ban archery and bow hunting in Australia, or in my state, South Australia. Um, and they actually back onto my complex, so they are the business behind me. Um, so <laughs> if I put an arrow through the wall, it's going to land in their yard. <laughs> One more. Look, I really like this bow. Um, just on that, yeah. So there's a petition by the RSPCA to ban archery and bow hunting in the state. They called for submission. There's a special parliamentary council committee looking into it. Um, they called for submissions. 80 people submitted. So there's 4,875 bow hunters in the state that self-identify as bow hunters. There's 2,000 target archers in the state. I think there's probably closer to what number did I come up with? I came up with a number probably closer to 10,000 archers in the state. And of the people who submitted submissions, so there was 80 submissions, about half were from animal groups, people who don't like hunting. Um, and it was triggered by a person shooting a cat with a bow, the neighbor's cat on a property. It's a, he lived on a rural property, shot the neighbor's cat. And then a person in the suburb shot a um, possum with a crossbow. Cheap crap, $200 crossbow, shot the possum, and that sparked the whole, should we ban archery? Why are people running around with bows in the suburbs? So on that, on that, I get extremely disappointed when you like archery, as I do, um, and no one writes in submissions. And even I get even angrier when people who are in the sport, who claim they have stores and claim whatever, go, well, this doesn't affect us because it only affects bow hunters. No, it affects you because they can ban bows, they ban gel blasters, they can ban 
lighting a fire in your backyard, they can ban whatever they like. Um, and less than 40 archers rode in. There was two people from the presentations to the committee, it took three days, there was only two archers who presented. One was from the Deer Association and one was a crossbow um, person. So I get a bit passionate about it. So it's like it takes you two minutes to write a letter to say, look, I really enjoy archery. It's a really positive thing in my life. Um, it's had positive influence in my life. That's all you've got to say. And a whole bunch of people do it from, you know, the age of five or two till the age of 80. That's all you had to write in. And if they got 10,000 letters from people, that committee would be finished with. But no, there was 40 people who basically said archery should be killed, got banned, and there was 40 people who said, this is rubbish. I don't know where it's gonna go, but we'll see. Okay, so I do get passionate about it as far as people banning archery, because I've been doing it since a kid. It's, it's been a positive influence in my life, and I think it's had, I've seen so many people have archery have a positive influence on their life, people suffering from depression, people suffering anxiety, just people who are not good at sport, people who are overweight, people who are not as coordinated and they become really good at archery and it's a whole social interaction thing and you can do it in your backyard and people jump on forums and have all their say and when it comes to actually doing something that matters you don't do it. Anyway, I'm going to get off my bandwagon now. Um, the group. I thought I shot really well. I thought I shot really well. I thought that all be in the middle. But clearly not. And look, they're not bad. I can't get my finger. There's two off to the side here, and it is what it is. I thought I shot a lot better than that. The bow, I didn't feel a bad shot. I could probably feel this one here. Maybe I dropped a little. Um, there was one shot there, I kind of, I was on the 10 and the shot broke and I felt like I dropped my arm a little bit. But overall, overall it felt much better than the results on the target. Um, the draw length, the bow says it's set at 28 and people go, well why don't you measure it and all that because I don't have the stuff here and I gem generally the bow set at 29. Um, I would shoot the bow at that draw length and I shoot about 29 inches. So I shoot 29 inches to 28 and a half and I would shoot that bow at that draw length. So the draw length felt comfortable, everything felt perfect, the draw length felt great, there was no vibration. I felt like all the arrows were in the middle and they clearly weren't, I don't know what that means. I found the bow extremely easy to shoot. Um, I think the speeds are a little bit high from where they should be um, published, but that's pretty common with um, people these days. Um, overall, the price point is excellent. The finish is excellent. And yes, there was two marks on that riser, but it's a $620 bow with the quiver, sight, arrow rest. I'm going to guess the sight's worth $50. The quiver's worth $50. The whisker biscuits were 40, so the bow's what 450. It's a it's a really good bow at that price. Um, as far as shipping, bear bear there is so there's shortages overall in the industry at the moment with COVID. And I'm gonna say bear there is delays with shipping, but some of it. So this shipment was ready and shipped to me. Um, it did take a while. Um, they've got another shipment ready for me it's, and it's not everything I ordered but it's let's say it's 50% of what I ordered and actually, that actually didn't take too long. Um, it's a bit of a hit and miss with what bows are going to be ready and what, what isn't going to be ready if you know what I mean. So if you ordered the entire bear range as I do you might get some and then not others if you know what I mean. You might get species like I just sold our species pretty much. So I want a whole bunch of species. I might not get those. I might get the top ends or I might get other stuff because it depends when they make stuff. So all this, the bear shipment I got was all made within a two week period. So they've got dates of manufacture on the box 
and pretty much 90% of them were all made in a two week period. Um, the traditional bows from Bear are taking a long time um, and the, someone at Bear was very angry for me saying that. But look, it is, it's, if you can get your, I suppose what I'm saying, if you can get your hands on a Bear, if there's, if the shop stocks Bear and it's in stock, then it's not a bad thing. But if you're gonna wait for it, you might be waiting a while. So if you have to have it ordered in, it might be a six month wait. Um, that may not be the case in America because your store may get them quicker than I get them. I don't know. But for me, if I didn't have a bear in stock, I would, I really wouldn't be quoting a time. I would be saying, look around elsewhere for it. Um, for me, I want to get all the bows in stock and then I sell what I have in stock. Um, and that works pretty well with bear. But as far as doing special orders, I want a green bear divergent in something. They, bear doesn't do custom, so if you're thinking I want a bear with white limbs, they don't do custom. Botec, PSC, Hoyt do custom, not bear. Bear's generally a box. The shipping is really nice. As far as the boxes, the bows come in, the cams are protected, they come wrapped in plastic, so those marks you see on that riser, the boxes were all, like the shipment that came, it was like several hundred bows, all wrapped in plastic, all wrapped in boxes there was no damage to any box in the shipment so that the damage you see on that paint was at the factory somehow um, so overall that i think bears are very very solid um wait times is is the issue but that's not a bad thing as far as for me because that means i stock lots of items if you're a shop who doesn't stock items it will be an issue for you but then maybe you won't stock bear but if you, I suppose what I'm saying, if you're going to stop there in your shop, you've got to order it all in and have it in stock. And to me, that's not really a problem because that's what you should be doing if you're a shop, stock the items that sell. Um, bear bows sell really well, especially the lower end items. They sell really, really well. The top end bears um, haven't sold as well for me, but that's just as a percentage wise of overall sales. Most people buy, most people starting off buy cheaper end products. Um, so the species like that white tail that will sell um, probably in the next few weeks and probably that person will be angry about the paint marks on it. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, I'm Stephen Hare from Archery Supplies. That's the bear white tail, um, pretty much the same as the species, which I will do a review on once it comes, but I'll be doing more of the bears as it rolls on. So. Stay safe and in COVID times, like most of Australia is in lockdown at the moment and in my state, you've got to wear masks wherever you go. Um, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Bye.